we're going to talk about adenosine triphosphate, adenosine diphosphate, which is ATP and ADP. So our objectives here, folks, is you should be able to distinguish the difference between ATP and ADP. You should be able to identify the parts of both ATP and ADP on a diagram. So, as we start off with ATP, okay, adenosine triphosphate, it is the most important biological molecule that provides energy. Our bodies need energy for cellular activities. These cellular activities provide us with everything. I would not be moving around this room right now if I didn't have the energy that was necessary. Okay? That energy comes from ATP. All right, we'll talk in depth about how our body makes this ATP later on. Okay, it's yet another cellular process that we get to, and we'll discuss that, but we just need to know a little bit of background of ATP. Okay, and the first thing that it's the most important molecule that provides energy for our bodies. Okay. ATP is made of a ribose sugar, three phosphate groups, and an adenine base. So when we color the different parts of the diagram here in a little bit, we're going to see that one part's a ribose sugar. One part is adenine. And the three phosphate groups are the third part of this ATP molecule. ATP is the most abundant energy carrier. ATP is the most abundant of the energy carriers. Well, how do we get that energy? Well, we get that energy when the third phosphate breaks off. That third phosphate will break off and it will release energy. When that happens, that's where we get the energy. Now, as I look at this, this is the diagram, but it's a little bit different than your diagram. Okay? Let's look at the three parts and let's label them. All right? Find where you have the three P's. Okay? Those three P's are the three phosphate groups. So go ahead and label those three P's, three phosphate groups. And if I were you, I would color them yellow. Okay, so label the three phosphate groups, color them yellow. Now the second part of this, Right here in the middle, 
right here in the middle. This is the ribose sugar. Okay? So, color that ribose sugar. And I see it can either be red, it can be orange. Okay? Does not matter. Okay? Doesn't matter, red or orange, but the ribose sugar is the part in the middle. So go ahead and label that ribose sugar and color it either red or orange. The third part up here, the third part is an adenine base. Okay? So this part here is adenine. So go ahead and label that adenine and color it blue. Label the adenine, color it blue. Now one final thing that you need to label on this chart is there's a little bracket down at the bottom that has these two things, right? Now, what those two things are, the ribose sugar and the adenine, when we put those together, that is... Adenosine, okay? So the ribose sugar and the adenine together we call adenosine. Where do you think we get this adenosine triphosphate? Here is the adenosine, these two things. Adenosine, one, two, three, triphosphate, A. TP. Now, let's just stop and think. Okay? Let's just stop and think. Based on strictly the names, based strictly on the names, what do you think the difference between a TP and a DP is? They Okay, meaning two. The D, the die. Die means two. So it's how how is A D P different from A T P? Well, it has one less phosphate. ADP, first of all, is essential in photosynthesis and a process called glycolysis. It is essential in photosynthesis and glycolysis. The end product, it is the end product when adenosine triphosphate, ATP, loses one of its phosphate groups. So ATP loses a phosphate group to become ADP. When that happens, we're also releasing energy, okay? We're also releasing energy when the ATP loses its phosphate group, okay? However, we can reconvert that ADP back to ATP by adding back a phosphate group. 
So we can take the ADP, we can add the phosphate group back onto it, and we would get ATP. So it would be somewhat of a cyclic process. Now, when you have the structure of ADP, once again, label this stuff the same as you just did with the ATP. So label them the same, color them the same, but we know. What is the difference? Well, right here, okay? Right here, this phosphate group is not attached. So we only have two phosphates instead of three. And when that occurs, when we break that bond between this second and third phosphate, we have the release of energy. So make sure you label that you have energy being released when we break that third ATP off to form the ADP. So we still have adenine. We still have a ribose sugar, but we have broken off one of the three phosphates. And in that process of breaking off that phosphate, we have released energy. Now I said that this whole ATP and ADP was a cyclic process. Okay? I've got a little device here that we came up with last year. It's not really a device, it's a diagram. I've got a little diagram that might help you remember what is occurring. Okay? And when I flick, my analogy of ADP and ATP is as follows. All right? Think about this. Okay? This looks to me like a diagram from my iPhone here, in which I have a full battery of energy, don't I? Okay? I've got a full battery of energy. This is my ATP here in the analogy. When I take off that phosphate and I release energy, energy's given off, I run down my battery, don't I? As I run down my battery, that is like the ADP. Well, can I charge back up my battery? Yeah. Okay, I plug it in, I charge it back up. So I put more energy into it, I add that phosphate back, and now I have ATP. And then I run the ATP down, I use the energy, I take the phosphate out, my battery goes dead, I have the ADP. I charge it back up, put the phosphate back in, I have ATP. So it's a continuous circle of charging, using the energy, charging, using the energy. So think of it as that. When I run my phone battery dead, it's like the ADP. I charge it back up, I put that phosphate back on, it's like the ATP. Okay? ATP. 